we've had stunting levels almost remaining the same level. The first 1,000 days for the child is very important. Huku tunakula chakula tu wote. Hakuna mtu anasema ati chakula ini ya watoto apana. Tunaishi maisha ila atari. Unakuta watu wanakula wapatati. Hawali watakati. Mamba alishebora ni misikia na nini. Hatunajua gina hii hakuna uwezo. Wewe ukikula viazi, uchamisha viazi ukule, mbola tu ushibe. Uweka ati family planning, utawekwa fimbo ili ujai on. Nini kipata mshara, ya nataka zote. Mtoto akiwa in that scenario, kwa napelekwa kwa watu wanyo wanaoba. Because that is a spiritual problem. What are their sources of information? And who are their influencers? Human capital refers to the knowledge, skills, and health that people accumulate during their lifetime. Individuals and countries with more human capital are likely to generate more income. Therefore, human capital is critical for sustainable growth and poverty reduction, especially in developing countries. According to the World Bank's Human Capital Index, Kenya is currently half as productive as it could be if its children benefited from complete quality education and full health. Issues of stunting and malnutrition are estimated to cost the country 3.5 billion US dollars due to a lack of productivity in the workforce. In Kenya for the last 15 years, we've had stunting levels almost remaining the same level. Uh, the last Kenya Demographic Health Survey suggests that 26% of children are stunted. And this has remained a major issue. Despite that fact that there are a lot of interventions and activities that have been implemented. The first 1,000 days for the child is very important because beyond that, without an intervention, stunting is, will not be corrected. The poverty levels are quite, quite high uh, in some of these areas. Number two, our eating habits are not very good also. And lastly, um, family planning some of these areas is, 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 is also a challenge. So it's very difficult to have uh, three full meals in a day in most households. Most parents haoni ni kama nishida. So if a child is stunted, atakuwa mfupi. Pia stunting affects also the cognitive skills. Mtoto anakuwa anashika pole pole darasani, alafu pia anakuwa wakusahau. So the choice of those country, counties was twofold. One, they were above national average. Two, they represent different agrarian economies, which might give us a glimpse of what might be driving, given that different economies may be perhaps playing out towards that, or there are certain cultural dynamics. How do these mothers, women, access knowledge that enables them to feed their children? What drives that? What are their sources of information? And who are their influencers? One of the key steps towards raising the country's human capital index score is ensuring that the first 1,000 days of a child's life take place without any interruptions, ensuring their growth and development. In 2021, we sought to understand the why behind malnutrition and specifically stunting in Kenyan households. What we found was a layered issue that had many contributing factors. Despite different parts of rural Kenya having different agrarian economies, one key thing seems to remain consistent. The people in these areas are living in extreme poverty. As a result, caregivers struggle to consistently put food on the table, which negatively impacts the children's development. <laughs> General, kama mtoto, baba, yivo. Hakuna mtu anasema ati chakula ini ya watoto apana. Usu lishebora, iyo sana sana naona kama ni kwa watoto. Proteins ambayo napea watoto, kwanza ni iyo maziwa, halafu maharagwe. Wakati mwingine na wapea ndengu kama nitapata. Chakula enye tunakula sana ni ugali, kwa sababu iyo ndio ni raisi kupata. Ah, wetu wanakula tu chenye tunakula. Chakula ile inapatikana huko kwa wingi ni waru, mahindi, alafu mboga unaona mara mingi ni cabbage, sukuma, si kila mtu ako na uwezo wa kununua nyama. Wa mama wanakoza maziwa kwa matiti kwa sababu ya kukosa kukula. 
tunaishi na watu nane baba alafu mama alafu mimi alafu watoto mimi niko na mwaka 23 na niko na watoto sita na bwana ametoroka mimi peke yangu ndio mimi nashughulikia tunanunua tu chakula kwa soko hasa sisi tunakula tu gali na mboga kwa wiki moja tunaweza lala njaa kwa siku mbili e watoto wangu wanakosa wangu hata na school fees wanakosa hii ta lovera tunakata tunapeleka koju tunapata shilingi 100 tunua sukari na kilo ya 50 lafu ina nua sabuni ya 20 lafu lafu mafuta ya 20 hapo na kitungu ya 10 mimi inaisha tunaishi maisha ile hatari hata hii mfua jana ilitupika na hiyo mtoto atukulala usiku yote kwa sababu nyumba pia ni mbaya usema hata majirani nao hali hiyo ambayo ya ukosefu wa chakula inapatikana na utamona afya yake imeanza kusoroteka kiasi cha kwamba hata nafika wanaenda mnyenzeni kule dispensary wanasedi wana chakula kama uji una madawa pale ili kutengeneza ile afya yao iwe nzuri na sahi mambo ni mawili kuna ukami wa chakula na maji hayo ndio mateso bila shaka mmetembea kwa mtu simeona ile maji ndio ambao wanadamu wanatumia sahi adhara yake ni kama kichocho mamba kipindu pindu ishida ya kwanza ni uchochole uchochole mm-hmm. yani ule maskini ile pato ya ile familia mm-hmm. sasa unakuta watu wanakula wapatacho hawali watakacho In urban and peri-urban areas, while access to food might not be an issue, the access to information on the correct feeding patterns and practices for children is limited. Therefore, caregivers find themselves depending on unreliable sources of information when making decisions regarding their children's nutrition. Munatoa habari hii wapi kuhusu chakula ambacho mnaweza wapa watoto wenu? Hiyo habari tunaitoa hospitali. Tunamipata skoni sisi wenye tuko na wazazi karibu tunapata mm. nakupea mawaidha vile utalisha mtoto mm. wana share na mama wengine mimi mm. nakwambia Kenya anapea mtoto wake na wewe unaenda unapea wako hii muda yote nimekaa nyandaro mambo yalishe bora nimesikia na nyinyi so, ili uweze kutofautisha baina chakula cha watoto na watu wazima kwa kulingana na jamii ya watu fulani pengine maisha yao ni ya chini ndio unajua kuna yule unasema wewe ukikula viazi uchamsha viazi ukule bora tu ushibe naona anaona tu ni kawaida tuwaongeesha unaona kama unakosea ama waanze kusema unalinga nini katika hiyo sio naogopa tu ametufunza kuhusu lishe bora ya watoto lakini sipati pesa ya kununua hiyo chakula lishe bora na mambo ya balance diet hapa mnaijua ah tunajua lakini hakuna uwezo In some communities, culture plays a key role in influencing the decision-making processes within a household. In communities where children are valued, we find that parents choose to have numerous children despite their financial capabilities. This results in children growing up with a lack of certain necessities such as food due to the parents' inability to provide for all their children. Watu huko kwenu mnaona wanapendelea kutumia family planning ama hawapendelei. Mimi niko na watoto wawili lakini bado ndaendelea kuza. The more you have men hapo ndio heshima yako pia wanakuwa na kuokoba. Na kwa tuseme kwa mkutano wewe ndio priority kuongea. Lakini kama uko na wachache na kwanza waje ikuwe wasichana hapo ndio huna sauti. Uweka mm. family planning huku ukijaribu hiyo utawekwa fimbo ile ujayo napata watoto wako na ukiona wako na stress mingi sababu auni wasasi wote nilikuwa nimeenda hivyo hawangeniona labda mpaka kama samajio na usiku usiku wa kwanza wako na miaka saba. Sita. <laughs> okay wako na miaka sita. huyu ana moja na nusu mbili ai we Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
Across the country, we came across women who played various roles, including that of primary caregiver and breadwinner, despite having limited decision-making power within the household. We found that women were burdened with both providing and caring for the child, and oftentimes, the child's care became compromised. <laughs> Most of people, I'm um, part of them, to me venture kwa kulima sasa. Like we are planting some things, like potatoes, um, uh, iso skuma, we tunazipeleka kwa soko. Iyo kidogo ukiuza, unapata rutu manenye, itaku sustain, itawa sustain sasa. Sa ukulima ndo, tumengililia. Uki plant like po, mm -hmm, beans, unapata like kumewaka jua, so they are adding up drying, zinakauka. So your protein kwenda kuitafuta kwa soko inakuwa sana ni bei ingine yenye iko expensive. Mungu anafaa tutegenezee soko. Mimi tu akitutegenezea soko ya food that, that we plant itakuwa tutaweza kualisha vizuri because we always have money. Malnutrition issues in these communities are often shrouded in shame and as a result are often concealed within the household. These beliefs and perceptions lead to these children being denied access to the necessary interventions, and instead, parents go in search of a spiritual solution for a health issue. Mtu mwenye ako na mtoto mwenye amekonda ama mtoto mwenye unaona mwili yake si mzuri, anaogopa. Dalili yenye naonekana hii mtoto ya chakula chakula poa inasanga kuwa na tumbo kubwa. In that scenario, in our informal settlement, what they do, mostly akiwa mekonda ivo anapelekwa kwa watu wa nyawanaomba. Aumbewe, because that is a spiritual problem. For interventions that communities in rural areas can access and believe in to be put in place, institutions that community members trust, such as religious groups, have to be utilized. There are some churches that I know have created uh, forums for mothers before and after. Uh, for us, uh, when a lady gets pregnant, the elderly ones, those who are wame, wame they come around her, begin to tell her, check out for this, check out for this. When the child comes, check out for this. Uh, that helped us a lot. 
In order to provide for their families, parents and especially mothers have found themselves going out in search of daily bread to feed their loved ones. This has left them looking for options for caregivers for their young ones. This is where daycares such as this one come in. Niliamua kufungua daycare kwa sababu niliangalia around nikaona daycare haziku kuwa mingi by then. So nikaona opportunity ya biashara. Uh, charges ni 150 per day, 100 bob ni ya daycare services, 50 bob ni ya chakula. Tuko na menu yenye ina to guide uh, the whole week. Wana prefer hapa kwa sababu zile quality of the service wanapata hapa, hawawezi pata kwa daycare ingine yote. Currently ni kona mtoto mwenye nakanga na hii from Sunday, mamaki ya na mchukua on Friday. Kitambo, ni kona ishimole karibu na daycare. So hapa nilikuwa na mpleka subuhi ni kikuja job. Then kitoka job na mshukwa jioni, tukikuja kwa nyumba pamoja. Lakini si nikakuja, nikahama. So kuhama, nikaungea na mama laki. Sizi itoa mtoto wapu. Kulingana na venye anamweka. You see trust, dekia yote. So nikamungelesha, nitakuwa nikimplikia mtoto Sunday jioni. Then na mshukwa Friday jioni. Nikitoka job. Yeah, nivu ndo nimekuwa nikifanya. Siku kwa toka tu kwa mfanyikazi hivu. It's either mama laki ama mimi, hivu. Lakini mostly ni lazima ni pigia simu kila siku sambili. Ni mulize vinyo mtuta meshinda, vinyako, wafiake, hivu. Ya, tukona hiyo shirika ya TTK. Ina kujanga kuwa fanya health assessment. Wapima weight, height na kujua vile wanaendelea. Akiwa mtoto akiwa na shida, wanaongea na mzazi. Wana muandikia referral letter na mpeleka wa hospitali. Then bado wana mfatilia mpaka uyo mtoto hapone. These daycares have cultivated an element of trust between the daycare managers and the children's parents, thus becoming a promising pathway to possible interventions for stunted children in urban and peri-urban areas. While stunting has often been viewed as a healthcare issue, what has been clearly demonstrated is that it is an issue that cuts across several sectors. You know, often we are told it's not just malnutrition, it's, it's undernutrition and overnutrition. So we are facing sort of the triple burden when it comes to uh, nutritional diseases. It's clear that um, the key interactions we have with children um, are very intense between ages zero to nine months. Um, but beyond that, up until the child then comes back into the formal school system where they have an interaction with government, um, there seems to be a lag period where we are not too sure what is happening in the development of the child.